Hey everybody, I'm Chef Tom with ATBBQ.com and this is Barbecue Chicken Lollipops. Well today we're cooking up something that's become a new barbecue classic, the chicken lollipop, and it's all about the presentation. With that said, we're gonna pack a ton of flavor into these things, but before we can do that, we've gotta get them trimmed up. So as you can see, we're working with the chicken drumsticks today. And what we're gonna be doing to prepare these for the lollipop style is we're gonna make an incision or a cut all the way around the leg here. We're going to remove all of these tendons and skin from the top half and push the rest down to the bottom to form sort of a lollipop shape. Usually what I do here is I come into where that meat is starting to meet the bone and I'll make a slice straight down. We're trying to get rid of most of these tendons that are honestly the reason I don't eat drumsticks very often because I, I just don't like all the tendons and stuff in there. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut right through them. So you wanna get all the way down to the bone. Let's we'll start scraping that up. And then once it's clean like that, you can pick this thing up and peel the top off. So this one's actually pretty easy. Sometimes you're gonna struggle with them a bit and you can always use your knife to kind of clean up the last little bits. But now we push all of this down, we've got this beautiful presentation, but we've got a problem. It doesn't wanna stand upright. So we're gonna flatten off the bottom, take our knife and cut it straight so that it stands upright perfectly. And then we're gonna do that 11 more times. So now that we got those trimmed up, we're gonna start in on the flavoring process. And we're gonna start with a brine today. One of the great things about a little piece of meat like this is it can brine pretty quickly, 45 minutes to an hour, and it's taken on the flavor of that brine and soaked up some of that juiciness so that you have an end product that is much more juicy. Uh, today we're doing a very basic brine. It's the Cattleman's Grill Butcher House brine. It's just all the basic stuff you need in a really solid brine. Salt, sugar, it's got garlic and onion, and those flavors are gonna be imparted into the meat in the time that it soaks. So that's where we're jumping off from. Let's go ahead and mix this brine up and get the drumsticks in there. So we're gonna start with three quarts of water. Should be plenty to submerge our actually baker's dozen of these lollipops. And then for every quart of water, you need about six tablespoons of the butcher house brine. So we're gonna go one cup and two tablespoons. And that'll leave us enough of this brine to do a couple more quarts for another project. No need to warm this up. We're just gonna whisk until it starts to dissolve. So I usually just go about 60 seconds and then I'll feel in there if I can feel any grit, I'll keep going, but it's completely dissolved. So at this point, chicken goes in the brine. And you could actually trim these after you brine them if you want to. I've done it both ways. I don't feel there's an advantage, so I just go ahead and trim them up front. That way you actually get that brine accessing the meat through the top. Get that plate in place and lock it in. We throw that in the fridge for 45 minutes to an hour. So today we're gonna to be cooking on the Yoder Smokers YS640S pellet grill. And I don't normally show you guys the pellets that we're cooking with, but I'm excited because we got a new mix from Barbecuers Delight. They're calling it the contest mix. Now all of Barbecuers Delight pellets are oak based with a flavor wood added to them. They're all 100% wood, so you're cooking with wood. They use that oak so that you get a consistent BTU, a consistent burning rate. Uh, out of the pellets. But this one actually blends together cherry and pecan, two of our favorite pellets that we like to mix anyway. You get it all in one bag. So we're gonna go with those for our barbecue today. So we'll fire it up. We're gonna be cooking at 325, a roasting temperature today, to make sure that we get a really nice bite through skin on our chicken. All right, so the chicken's had time to brine now. We're gonna pull it out, get it seasoned up, and onto the grill. All right, so we're gonna get the excess moisture off of these as they come out. I do maybe prefer, as I think about it more, doing the trimming on these ahead of time before the brine, just because it's nice to be able to just pull these out, season them up and get them on. 
and you're not messing with wet chicken trying to trim that up and get it into shape. So now we're gonna get these seasoned up. We're using the Oak Ridge Barbecue Domin Dominator Sweet Rib Rub. Uh, it's a great barbecue rub with some kind of unique flavors in it. Uh, it's got your normal stuff, of course, salt, sugar, garlic, black pepper, um, but it's also got like four different chilies in it. Um, it has some coriander and some Vietnamese cinnamon that are really interesting flavor notes. And those are actually gonna work really well with this glaze we're gonna put together uh, for the chicken for dipping a little bit later, but we'll get to that. You actually kind of don't have to season the bottom too much because the stuff that's fallen off, we'll just kind of soak that up there at the end. Let's be smart about this, right? We're learning. All right, so get the bottom seasoned up here. And honestly, these are ready to go on pretty much immediately. Like once you see some moisture on the surface, we know that that rub is really attached to the meat or the skin in this case and uh, that tells us that they're ready to cook. Look at that, we didn't waste any. All right, so we're just gonna stand these upright on the second shelf. We're cooking indirect heat, again, 325, a roasting temperature, because we want our skin to cook through. We don't want rubbery skin. And then once we get these loaded up here, we're gonna be ready to just let them go for quite a while. I would expect we don't have anything to do for about 45 minutes to an hour when that internal temperature gets a little bit closer to done. Well guys, we're about 40 minutes into the cook now. We're gonna mix up our sauce glaze combo, whatever you wanna call that. And we wanna warm it up. We don't want it to be cold. Uh, room temperature's okay, but warm is ideal so that we can dip our uh, lollipops into that sauce and then put them back on. All right, so we're gonna start off with a base of Firebug Mild Grilling Sauce. And I'm gonna put about half of this bottle in here. So that's gonna be about one cup. So this is a great grilling sauce, barbecue sauce with fruity flavors into it. We also wanna add a couple tablespoons of pineapple juice. So this kind of thins things out, but it's got that great pineapple flavor which goes well with barbecue. We're gonna add one tablespoon of honey, and this is kind of for the sheen. We want it to shine a little bit. And then here's where we're gonna take a little detour from the normal. We're gonna add a couple tablespoons of curry paste. So this might sound kind of crazy, but curry barbecue sauce is delicious, incredible depth of flavor. You're getting all kinds of umami out of it. People won't know what hit them. We want to add just enough of this curry paste that you notice something is different, but it's not taking over everything. So we'll give this a whisk. We're going to throw it on the grill, and then here in a few minutes, we can start dipping and glazing our lollipops. Right there over the firebox. <laughs> We've got some great color going. Skin's rendering away, which is great. We're sitting at about, say, 155. We want to really want to get these glazed around 160 and finish them around 170, 175. When it comes to the dark meat of the chicken, we, we want to finish it differently than we do the white meat. So, whereas a chicken breast might finish at like 160, 155, 160, and let that carry over cooking, bring it up to 165. That's a juicy finishing for a white meat, but when it comes to the dark meat, it needs a little bit higher temperature to really break down that extra fat and connective tissue that's in the darker meat, because once it gets to like that 170, 175 range, it's just like velvet, great texture. All right, so let's take a look here. See our sauce? It's moving a bit, it's loosened up, it's because it's warm. Got a nice shine to it now from that honey and the pineapple juice. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna pour this off into a jar. I find this to be the easiest way to go about glazing. Oh man, I just caught a whiff of that, that curry and barbecue combo. It smells awesome. So check this out. We're gonna come right back up here to our lollipops. One by one, dunk them, shake off that excess, and then back onto the grill for the sauce to tack up.
We're just gonna go all the way through all of these and get them all dumped. Man, just smelling smoke, barbecue sauce, curry. I don't know why we don't put these things together more often. All right, last one. These aren't gonna take long now. Again, I, like I said, we're gonna go for like 170 on finishing internal. Let's close up the lid and let that sauce tack up. All right, guys, well, we're temping in the sweet spot on all of these lollipops now, so we're gonna start to pull these off. You can see how that sauce is really tacked up on the outside, nice and sticky on the surface from the heat. All right, let's have a bite. Mm. That curry barbecue sauce, it's got some incredible depth of flavor. Not something you taste all the time. And if it's not for you, it's not for you, but I'd say give it a shot. Now the chicken is just extremely juicy and we've cooked it now until it just about falls off this thing. But thanks to that brine, it's juicy down to its core. Great flavor. I mean, that's a fun little barbecue dish. And these things are gonna be a hit someday when we can get together and have some parties, right? Throw a plate of those out, grab it by the handle, you got a good time. We'll see you later. Thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to check out atbbq.com for all the products featured in today's video. If you enjoyed the recipe, hit that subscribe button. If you have any questions or comments or there's anything you'd like to see me cook, let me know in the comment section down below and let's be good to one another. For more recipes, tips, and techniques, head over to atbbq.com slash the sauce. All things barbecue, where barbecue legends are made.